Hi guys, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Shadur Vikram Gupta. I have done uh, MS General Surgery from UCMS and MCH in Minimal Access Surgery from AIMS. So, uh, now coming to the question which I gave you, uh, coming to uh, in image uh, based question, uh, the question 22 was type of um, NL fistula shown in the image below which has been marked by blue arrow. So options were inter sphincteric, trans sphincteric fistula, supra sphincteric fistula and extra sphincteric fistula. So the marking in the uh, questions are, uh, this is the internal sphincter, it has already been marked. This is external sphincter which is marked and this is the fistula tract which is marked by the blue arrow. So uh, the answer is uh, one inter sphincteric uh, fistula. So coming to the explanation of uh, this question. Firstly, let me tell you brief anatomy regarding uh, anorectal region Th that will help you solve this question. So this is rectum which forms anal canal below. This is the skin. So thickened part of the internal sphincter, thickened part of the circular muscle layer of the rectum forms internal sphincter on the other side also. So this is internal sphincter and uh, this is external sphincter the subcutaneous part of the external sphincter and this muscle is levator ani so let me label these for you and here lies the anorectal ring so the theory of uh, genesis of anorectal abscess is that the anal gland which lies between the internal sphincter as well as the external sphincter they got in infected first and they burst inside usually in the region of anorectal ring or they may burst above the anorectal ring if they burst above the anorectal ring then it is called high type of of anal fistula and if they rupture below the anal rectal ring then they they are called low type of fistula in anal so uh, now coming to type type of the fistula the reference point of uh, defining type is external sphincter. So you will be defining all type based on the reference point as external sphincter. So as I mentioned the anal glands uh, gets infected first. So they rupture either above the rectal ring or below it. So the external opening is the main defining thing. If the external opening goes between the internal sphincter as well as the inter uh, external sphincter then it is called inter sphincter if the fistula tract crosses the external sphincter then it is called trans sphincter when this fistula tract goes above the external sphincter then it is called supra sphincter when the rectum is directly connected to the skin extra to the sphincter then it is called extra sphincteric. So this classification is known as path classification. As you can uh, see in this image, the, the track goes between the internal as well as the external sphincter. Therefore, it becomes type 1 or inter sphincteric. If the track crosses the external sphincter, then it becomes trans sphincteric or type 2 fistula in NO. If the tract goes above the uh, external sphincter then it becomes supra sphincteric or type 3 sphincter and if it it lies extra to the external sphincter then it is it becomes extra sphincteric facial area so the, uh, this is uh, about the classification we'll uh, discuss few more mcqs like crypto glandular theory so this theory says all the anorectal abscess derive from anal gland by and they are they are known as cryptoglandular abscess so uh, about the treatment part so either so either removal of whole tract which is known as fistulectomy or laying open of this tract 
which is known as facial autophagy. And there are two newer advanced processes which are known as WAFT and LIFT. The full form of WAFT is Video Assisted Anal Fistula Treatment, while the full form of LIFT is Ligation of Inter Sphincteric Tract. So, in LIFT, you ligate the internal sphincteric tract. And in WAFT, with help of fistuloscope, you treat the fistula in animal. These are two uh, newer processes and they may come as a MCQ in future need. And this is also Im important. So, uh, now uh, talking about uh, good salts rule. Another important question in fistula is, you know, is good salts rule. The good salts rule is simple. If you divide the anal canal by a horizontal line into anterior and posterior part, so Gutsal rule says that anterior tracts are straight and they are short and they directly open at their respective clock positions, while posterior tracts are curved and they all open at 6 o'clock position. The exception to uh, this rule is long anterior tract, which goes in curvilinear near manner and opens at 6 o'clock position. So this is a MCQ question that uh, the long anterior uh, fistula is exception to the Gutsal's rule. And uh, the, the rule says that anterior tracts are short and straight and they open at their respective clock positions while the posterior tracts are curved and they open at uh, 6 o'clock position in the midline. So now coming to the next question, what is Tillock stride? I will be discussing about the Tillock stride. The question was Tillock stride is seen in. The options were omental cyst, mesenteric cyst, hydrated cyst and mesenteric lymphadenitis. The answer to this question is mesenteric cyst. The Tillock stride is seen in mesenteric cyst. So I will be discussing about the components of the Tillock stride. The mesenteric cyst usually arise from the mesentery as you know that uh, the attachment of the mesentery is from DZ flexure in the left to the right SI joint. So the swelling arising from the mesentery, suppose this is a mesenteric cyst. So they move perpendicular to this line but not along with it. Once the mesenteric cyst enlarges, it pushes the bubble loops from its anterior aspect and they go to line the periphery of the cyst. If you percuss, this area will be dull and this area will be resonant. These three things form uh, Tillock stride that is dullness over the swelling one, band of resonance all around and movement perpendicular to line of attachment of the mesentery. So summarizing, dullness over the swelling, band of resonance around the swelling, movement perpendicular to attachment of mesentery. So these things we have to remember by the concepts and not uh, we don't have to cram these. If you pay attention to the basics, the pathophysiology, you may be able to remember all these. There is no need to cram all these things.